Obviously today we're very far from that. And it's the early days of I think one of the most exciting moments in time and technology just that I've lived through in terms of this massive shift to AI. And you know what I thought I would do is just mention two or three learnings from sort of the past in terms of other technology waves that happened and how to think about agents perhaps through that lens. And in particular, I think that whenever there are these big technology waves, everybody tries to build things that are very general, general purpose. Um, and so, uh, you know, they'll always say, well, I want to build the broadest possible thing for the most possible users, and that's the best way to build something that's impactful, et cetera. And I think it's actually very useful to do the opposite and to ask, what is the singular use case that my agent will solve? I don't need to build a general purpose tool for everything. I need to solve one or two use cases extremely deeply. And most of the agent-related um, companies or projects or people that I talk to are all doing these very broad things. And sometimes, even if they try to define it down into something narrow, if you dig into it, it's actually quite broad. So an example would be um, an agent that effectively replaces an executive assistant. And so you'll ask people, OK, great, what's the very first thing that it does? And you end up hearing, well, it makes your life easier. <laughs> and you're like, OK, well, what does that mean? And it will it'll help travel for you. It will plan your day. It will play the right music for you. And you're like, that's not what my EA does, A, but B, that's way too broad. And maybe the right thing to start with is it does calendaring, and it pulls all the data about each person you're about to meet, and it scours the web, and it scours your emails, and it gives you a summary so you have context for that person going in. That for me would be incredibly useful. It's very targeted. It's very focused, and it starts with one thing, and then it grows from there. And so I think one big learning is, in general, the apps that end up the biggest actually start off focused and they grow really big. And there's a YCism around this, which is it's better to please 100 people very deeply than 10,000 people somehow. Right? You want to start with something that people get really excited and passionate about. Um, I think the second thing is just shipping fast. And I know that's an obvious statement to the community and group here. But I think people often wait for something to be too good before they launch it. And so I think like that fast speed of iteration is going to really matter a lot because, again, it's a very competitive market. Everybody's doing land grab. Everybody's going to go in for it. And so I think speed is really important. Um, and then lastly, you know, I think uh, fundamentally it's remain focused on your users and your customers and everything else and don't worry about what people are doing because people get very um, competitor-centric or they try to copy things competitors are doing and they say somebody raised a giant round or whatever and it usually doesn't matter. Um, usually the companies that raise the most money actually aren't the ones that do the best. They get distracted by a bunch of other stuff. And so those are sort of three tips in five minutes um, in terms of stuff that I think may be relevant to as, as you build out these agent-centric things. And again, I think it's an incredibly exciting moment in time. And um, you know, I'm helping somebody get something up and running right now um, called Brain Trust, and hopefully maybe I can come back in a couple of months when that's fully baked and we can talk about that. And you know, maybe the community can make use of that as well. So thanks so much for the time, and um, very exciting to see what everybody built. <laughs>